Good day. Welcome to Yoga Bliss in the studio and on Zoom and on YouTube when you join me later on. Today is going to be all about flexibility and relaxation. Now, of course, I mean in yoga. Oh, you know, I also mean in life. So we have no music. This will be our body pace workout. 20 years ago, I trademarked body pace workout. Now I'm using it. I'm doing one last thing. Muting participants upon entry, which I appreciate your patience. And you got to check out my good root job there, didn't you? Me too. <laughs> so you may hear. You may hear laughing. You may hear breathing. You may see me come to do my glasses. I'm not going to start over. I'm just going to role model that people make mistakes, as do I, and we are good. There we are. I want to be able to see the people who are here on Zoom. Take a moment to discuss footwear. I've walked over here wearing sandals. No, I do not do yoga in sandals. I recommend if you can, you do yoga barefoot. However, I respect that you may have a reason, Diane, to make sure you lean an arch support on. So it's up to you whether you use some type of a sneaker, whether you use some type of a yoga sock that you've put a soft arch support in, or whether you are right on your feet. I'm going to just do a big stretch up. And when I come down, my feet are just a little wider than my hips. Notice my hands. I'm going to do it one more time. I stretch up. Listen to and honor your shoulders. For some people to do that big circle, for me on some days would hurt. See how my hands are open with the palms forward? That opens up your chest. Let's go side to side with your jazz hands. Here we are. Feel that push off, push off, push off. Now tuck your elbows in. Let's do windshield wipers right here. Double check your knees are unlocked. If you lock your knees, it just compresses the cartilage. When you unlock your knees, it uses your shoulders. Now listen to your shoulders and decide, should you go forehead height? Lift up as high as your body allows. Now you go at your pace. You might want to go much quicker than I am. I'm going at a pace where I can really listen to my shoulder that has arthritis. Take a moment, bring those hands back with a double shoulder roll. Feel how your body's all opened up. You guys look fabulous. Let's trace a smile. Breathing. Now, what way should your hands face? I don't care. Whatever way feels right for you, but keep your shoulders open. Don't accidentally let yourself collapse in. We'll do four more or so. Over the top, trace a rainbow your way. We're going to keep doing this move underneath. But now I want your focus over. Push off. Push off right here. If your knees are super tender, bring your feet in a little bit and have less pressure on the knees. It's up to you. Take one last under right here. Very nice. Now I'm going to do my double shoulder roll. Decide how wide you want when you do a squat. Pelvic tilt. Beautiful. Shoulder roll. Beautiful. I'm just going to take a little gentle rotation. Now, if you had issues, how can I put this delicately? With tenderness in the muscles in your butt? Welcome to the human race. Decide on your squat. Choose higher or lower. And here we are. Let's take this weeping willow. And now I'm going to take a minute and check out everybody's knees. You guys are fabulous. If you're here on Zoom or YouTube, see how my knees are stationary? I'm not letting my knees wobble. I'm taking the rotation through my waistline. Come on up. How high 
will your body go? Again, here I go slower because I'm doing what I call pain surfing. It's uncomfortable, but I want to intend to reach as far as I can. And it's a smile right here. Breathing. And let's have a rainbow right here. The rainbow, pull in on your abs, engage them because that will support smile, that will support your back right here. And last rainbow. We're coming down again in our goddess. Choose how low, breathing. And I'm just gonna release my arms and come on up into the goddess and release my arms. There we go, now I remember what we were supposed to do. Rotate the body. Oh yes, look at those knees staying out. I want to work my thighs more. So I'm coming down a little lower. Should you pamper your knees and come up a little more? Now I've been doing this all the way tall. Now I'm going to lean. Here we are with the lean. You're careful on your buns. That lean engages your buns. Breathing your back. Here's four and three. Here's two. I'm going to come up with a little shoulder roll. One and the other. And pull myself together. Just gently, easily feel your back and your shoulders. So apparently all throughout the practice, I'll keep straightening out my mat. I think I'll tape it down next week. Let's take a moment. And where do you like your feet when you do a chair? Side view? My feet are just under my hips. Many people like them right together. What does your body want? When you sit down in a chair, I'm gonna let my hand come back here to reiterate my flat back. Before we sit, lift your chest. Look just above your head height and sit your butt down just a little bit. Just a minute to check everybody out. You're fabulous. And now pulse. Pulse. Now, can you keep your chest up, flat back? See how it feels when you take your hands and put them out front. This is going to add a little weight to the work of your back. This adds more. Little pulse here adds the most. You can likely sit down farther than I. We're going to come up right here. So in the studio, there was a little roundedness, and you want to reiterate that flat back with me. We'll do it again. Where should your feet be? Remember, asana means seat. So we always have a pelvic tilt, sternum lift. Choose your foot position. And here we have started with your flat, beautiful flat back. You don't need to sit far. A little bent knee counts as a chair. Beautiful, you have it up tall, wonderful. Choose your arms. Let's have a dip and a dip and a dip. So your arms stay back. If that helps your chest tall, that's my recommendation for some. Here's four and three. Here's two. Come on up with your shoulder roll. Now, you didn't think I could see in the back corner, but I can. I got to compliment your fabulous flat back. All right. Beautiful. Now, let's think of the muscle in your hamstring. When you lift your leg behind you, I'm going slow. I'll show you. Side view behind you. Can you tell we're working our balance when we go this slowly? Press your arms back and feel your shoulder blades squeeze. Do you want to go way far? See what your body says. Very nice control. Yes. Now, back 20, 30 years ago, I used to kick my butt. When I did this, I want to explain. The movement should be what's right for you, not some arbitrary goal. Are you breathing? Here's three and two. Let's trace a smile. Feel your chest lifted, your body tall. Let's go for the rainbow over the top right here. Very nice. So I'm thinking of the places underneath that we're going to be working. And I want to make sure I do rhythmic limbering 
to warm up all the places we're going to stretch out. Here we are. Very nice. Your shoulders got a good warm up. Let's come up with shoulder roll right here. Very good. I want to do what I call the standing cat cow. I'll turn sideways. You could be facing me or sideways, whichever you choose. Flat back. Unlock your knees. Lean down just a little. For many people, this is down far enough. And the cat rounds your back and the cow arches your back. So you might be almost upright with a tiny lean. Here's point option number two. Come down enough to hold your thighs. Feel the flat back. And now round that back. And stick your butt up. Lift your chin up. There's your cow. Here's your cat. Here's your cow. Here's your cat. Here's your cow. Looks good in the studio. And then we're going to shoulder roll our way back up. Just lubricating the spine in one direction. Now let's feel the spine. Unlock knees. Pelvic tilt. Shoulder roll. Unlock knees. Double check. Beautiful. Here's a reach up. Up, up, other side now. Feel the spine tilt as this arm reaches down, down, other side now. Reach up, 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 one last time this way. Here we are. I'm going to do the exact same move, but let's take a moment and choose how wide you want your legs if you're going to do a little dip. See what your body tells you? And here we go. Reach, two, three, switch sides now. Reach up, up, up. So we've got spine bending, thighs warming up. And I don't know about you, but this is a brain twister for me. So I'm really like patting your head, rubbing your belly. So I'm really thinking shoulder back. Very nice. And last one, shoulder back. And here we are. Very nice. Roll shoulder, roll yourself up. Breathe and be. I'm going to try putting my mat in a different way. I had it on my step to keep it in place. That might be my problem. I'm jealous of all your shoulder rolls. You kept doing so many lovely ones. I need to join to one last little bit of the warm up. Pelvic tilt, sternum lift, shoulders down. When I do that shoulder roll, look at those palms forward, opens it up. Think of your little calf muscle. Have your feet parallel. And once you're sure they're parallel, pull your body up tall again. Lift up on your toes and come down. Lift up on your toes and come down. I'm so impressed. Very nice. Lift up. Now do it even smoother. Smoothly up and smoothly down. The smoother you go, the harder you work. Push on the ball of the foot so that you don't collapse out to the side. And here we are, those in the studio and those watching closely on YouTube can tell I'm not lifting up very far. That's all right. I intend further. And one last time, fabulous shoulder roll. Breathing. So we did those squats, they warmed your buns up. Let's go ahead and make sure you have blocks. Because notice my bent knees when I bend down to get my blocks. Be gentle on your body. As we do our stretching, I want to share with you some concepts. The concepts that help your muscles to stretch the best. If you can palm the floor, still use blocks. If you always use blocks this high, Go ahead and grab the little white stool or use a chair so you can be even higher. We're going to do the most gentle forward folds for you. And while we're there, we're going to hang there a while, and I'll tell you a story. Start with your mountain. Pelvic tilt, big, tall spine. I'm nosy. I have to appreciate it. You guys look fabulous. I'm going to do a flat back lean. So, Joanne, shine that chest up. Flat, flat, flat. And then when your body says, round it over, bent knees, 
ground it off. I've just done the tips of my fingers. I know this barely looks like a forward fold. My body says it is. Breathing. Even if you can go lower, I'm going to recommend for this, you come up to the block. The lowest I want you to go, unless it's nothing, is palms. Are you breathing? Think of your wrists. Should you not be putting your wrist at 90 degrees? In which case, stay with fingertips or knuckles. If you want to go down farther, go ahead and bend your elbows, but give yourself support. This supported forward fold. Take a moment. A couple of people have their blocks way out here. Go ahead and try them right under your shoulders and see how that feels. Relax your neck. Very nice. See these unlocked knees? Breathe and let one leg go more straight. Let the other leg go more straight. So here's the concept. <sighs> go as slowly as you need so you don't hyperventilate. We're hanging down here a long time. Now, Suzanne, if you've got... Uh, some sinus issues happening for you, you do the same thing up higher. Keep your head above your heart and enjoy walking your forward fold. Breathing as slowly as you want. So you might hang with one leg bent and the other straight for a good long time for the biggest, slowest breaths you can. The reason for holding this so long is uh, the sarcomeres in your muscles. They're the muscles that fit together like little uh, like alligator teeth and or zippers. And when we hold the stretch for a long time, the sarcomeres feel safe and they let go and they give you a little more stretch. So let's Stop walking the forward fold. Relax your neck. And wherever you are, take yourself down a little bit. It should feel good. Are you doing the right thing for your wrist? In my case, I want to rehab my wrist and, and bend it. So you decide. Should No, my thumb says don't do that. Listen to all the parts of your body. Flat wrist, bent wrist, we're down a little lower. And it's up to you. Breathe as slowly as is comfortable. You might decide on one breath to bend one leg and then the other leg with just your inhale. Play with your breath, relax the neck. Breathing, being. <sighs> we're going to go down to whatever feels like your comfortable lowest forward fold on this day. If you have an issue right on your tush, it could be sciatica. It could be something else. Listen to how it feels and only fold forward as much as feels good for you in this hour. Maximum Forward fold while we walk that forward fold out. Now, steady yourself in the center. Take the walk out. Bend your knees a bunch. Go ahead. Lift your chest up. Let your chest round down. Your knees are bent a bunch. I'm just exercising the back. Lift your chest up. And come on down. Joanne, take a look right at me. Here you are, rounded to wherever it is for you. I'm just doing the chest. I'm staying down. I'm just doing the chest. Fabulous body awareness. And one last time. Yes, I saw every single person in the studio. Relax down and breathe. Now I'm going to sit my butt down, lift my chest up, and arise. Arise, arise. Shoulder rolls. Every person in the studio had a fabulous flat back. 
Can you feel you really stretched out your buns, your hamstrings? Be gentle. Be gentle. That's why we went down into it so slowly, so mellowly. The number one thing necessary for quality stretching is to be relaxed. Tiny little, little bitty trace of smile. This is my diagnostic move. I'm just seeing how does everything feel after that forward fold? How does this little butt cheek feel that's unhappy with me today? Breathing. Got that little point and point that's working the arches of your feet, your toes, top of your foot, shin. Are you breathing very nice? So that was a back of the body stretch. Now I want to do a little stretch for the front of the body. It's a back bend. Everyone is different. Many people will feel better leaning up against. There's a bar around the room. You could lean up against the bar for a little extra stability when you do your back bend. If you're in the middle of the room, here's a suggestion. Many people find if their feet go a little wider, they have better balance. So pelvic tilt, wider feet, if you have a free floating back of it. Double check your shoulder blades are together. Beautiful. I'm gonna take my arms out, keep my shoulder blades back when my arms come forward so I haven't collapsed in this way. I've stayed open and have my arms, look, my arms have to come around to leave room for the girls. Customize for your body. Breathing. I'll show you the side view of my little back bend. Yours may be much greater. It's not a back bend here in the waistline. It's an opening up of the upper back. Keep your pelvic tilt. That is the most important thing. Where are you looking? Do you want to look at the wall and keep your head from going back? Do you relax your head and rest it on your shoulders and let your head go back? Your back bend your way now that you're here. See about letting your hips come a little forward while you keep your pelvic tilt. In the studio, everybody looks fabulous. I can't see on Zoom, but I trust you. We're going to come so slowly, so slowly, so slowly out of that back bend. That was your upper back bending. Let's think about the hip flexors now. So we stand, I'm going to leave my feet wide, just like they are. And I'm heading toward a little bitty lunge. My little bitty lunge says, watch my back foot. I'm going to step back just out to the ball of my foot. I'm going to come back to my regular position. By the way, do you need support? Go hold right on to a rail if you need support, just for the record, guys. I'm holding on to this desk often. Everybody deserves the support they need. That's not just yoga. I'm going to step back with this foot, bend my front leg. You're losing your balance? If you're losing your balance, your feet are too close. If you step back here and you lose your balance, take that foot. I can do it. Take that foot just a little wider so you have Nice, straight front foot. Look at your back foot. It's going to want to go this way, like warrior one. Take that back foot. I have to stare at my image to get my back foot to do the right thing. I'm leaving my arms down. Now I want to focus on my pelvic tilt and feel this is an active stretch of the hip flexors. Pelvic tilt while standing in a not real deep forward lunge. Are you breathing? I'm going to forward and do the same thing. Choose your width of your legs, your railroad tracks. Pelvic tilt. Really keep that pelvic tilt. You can't step far with your pelvic tilt. We don't need a back bend. We're opening up on this side. We're opening up the hip flexor. I'll show you the front view. Because in the studio, several people are being extra human and have that back foot at an angle. You want that back foot right on those railroad tracks. Fabulous. The heel is up because a lunge has only the toe on the ground. Hold on! If you're losing your balance, celebrate. If you're wiggling and staying up, your body, your lunge, 
feel this opening here? Yes, I saw that chest lift. It was beautiful. One more. Fabulous. Just pull it together. That was a high lunge. In my case, very high. Some of you were much lower than I. Everybody's a good body. Let's get your blocks. Breathing. The next one is another hip opener, but we're going to start it out with a pyramid. There you are on your railroad tracks. I'll show you a little diagonal view. Your railroad tracks have your feet with some distance. I feel like I need a little extra pampering in the balance area today, so my railroad tracks are wide. Pelvic tilt, sternum lift, calf shoulders up and back. Beautiful body awareness. Fabulous. For the pyramid, one foot steps forward, the other is back, and the legs are here. I got to go all the way straighter. I can't, my brain won't do it. You're on your railroad tracks. Look at my knees. They're all the way straight. So on your pyramid, I start. And I might actually, I need to. You might want to hold on to your legs on the way. Listen to your body. When you come down, are you holding on to a table? Oh, go ahead. It's all right to round. Will your body let you hold on to the top of the blocks? It's intense on that back heel. I didn't mean that on the back calf. I saw Joyce's heel come up, and my whole body said, yeah, do that too. And then ease down. And while we're here, you've got a rounded back if you want, but let your back go as near flat as it will. So here's rounded. It's like my a puppy dog tucked its tail under. Here's flat. Stick your butt out and flatten your back so you're as rounded as you need to be breathing. I am going to suggest, Joanne, you do the whole thing with one of those green chairs in front of you. You'll get much more benefit if you're up here. But you can do whatever your body wants. You're perfectly safe where you are. <sighs> We're breathing. Relax the neck. Very nice. Now our legs have been all the way straight. Let's go ahead and do a forward fold by just bringing our foot forward. We're rounded over. We're holding on. Let's do the pyramid with the other leg behind you. Press that heel down. And that's the concept that made me want to uh, speak up. When you move slowly, relaxedly, when you're stretching, you can avoid that stretch reflex, which is muscles engaging to protect you from overdoing. When I first went into my pyramid on the other side, I went too fast, and my body wanted me to come up and don't do it. So when I looked out and I saw someone else slowly set their heel down, I did mine slowly and realized I had the ability. Now, a couple people have this with bent legs, which is fine, but intend towards straight. Listen to your body, not overstretching anything. I'm coming into the forward fold by bringing both feet forward. This time, we're going to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Relax the neck. Relax the arms. Tuck your buns under and roll up one vertebrae. At a time. Shoulder rolls. When you get this, let's take ourselves down to the mat. If you want, you just climb down. Or you get on your bed if you're doing this on YouTube. Here I'm going to do a forward fold that turns into a down dog, that turns into a table and lowers me down. If you all see me gardening, and I need to get down on the ground. This is just what I do. Forward fall. To my... Yes, I have yoga blocks in my garden all over the place. To my down dog. Now, if you're able, lower both knees at a time. If you have knee issues, 
Support with one leg and gently slowly lower with the other. Breathing. If your knees hurt to kneel on them, breathe and lay yourself down because that's where we're all going. We're all going to lay right down. Breathe and be. The sphinx opens up the chest, stretches the abdominal wall. Let's take a moment and think about starting from the bottom up. Press your feet into the mat. For some people, when they press their feet into the mat, it makes their knees come up off the mat. It doesn't matter if that's you. Do what's right for you. Press your hands into the mat and double check your extra super excellent pelvic tilt. The pelvic tilt is what protects your low back. Many of the people who work with me are in my age group, 70 years old, plus or minus a little. Sometimes spinal stenosis finds us as the decades pass. Pelvic tilt protects your low back. If being up this high is not good for you, grab your block and take yourself down and find a place that is good for you, but you still have your pelvic tilt. If it's fine for you to be on your elbows, let's intend a little further. Do you want to push up onto your palms? This is a customized cobra pelvic tilt protects your low back. Now, I used to think this was easy. And now it is so hard on my shoulders and arms. Listen to your body. Elbows down or elbows up. Choose it. And I still want to show the full cobra. When you had your elbows down, can you see where your elbow was? That would be where you put your hands for the full cobra. This is one where you don't follow me. You do what your body will do. Press your feet, pelvic tilt, and push with your arms. Some days you might go up. Some days you might not. Honor your body. Intend further. Feel the stretching of the front of your body. Coming on down. And we'll roll ourselves over. So here's a tip. If you have... A sore shoulder, sometimes rolling over with your arm in line with your shoulder can hurt. But if you get your arm out of the way, you might roll over more comfortably. And we will go all the way on to our back. Breathing. Being. So yesterday I went in for an MRI. <laughs> And at the end, I got an email that says, you do have a brain. <laughs> and it's normal. Well, you can't really tell from an MRI, but it looked that way. The reason I mention that, there are some medical tests where they want you to lay completely flat. And that hurts some people. So I would like to show you what you can do that will help you when you need to lay flat. See those bent legs? Pull your heels in as close as they go. If you've had a knee replacement, you know your leg doesn't bend that well. Intend the best bend you can get. Then slowly with care, drop your knees out and let your feet be soul to soul. Three. I'm gonna take one leg up the other leg up and find myself back in this position. Please join me because I forgot the most important part of the whole thing. Pelvic tilt. Before you start, lift your tush and roll your spine down on the ground with a lovely pelvic tilt. This time we'll let our arms out, our legs out. And those of you who've been with me for years and years know that I did this move three days a week with for about a year. And much to my shock, I was able to lay flat when I needed to go for my next medical test. Just this move. Let's breathe and be while I tell you about functional stretching and therapeutic 
stretching. How's your pelvic tilt? And relax it. You put the pelvic tilt in, then you relax it. What if you have tenderness and it's like, oh, that's uncomfortable. Then you put a pillow right in whatever place you need to support your legs. You might even put a pillow or a block. Even if you don't need it, you might put it there because it's more relaxing. Because Kelly's going to talk a long time. Functional fitness is... Things like you reach up on the shelf to go as high as you can to get that mayonnaise. Therapeutic fitness, let's do this one together, is when you're going to have your arms, I roll my shoulder blades in, and now I'm going to see, can I set my laced fingers on my forehead? Careful, how's it feel? I think everyone in here in the studio has more functional shoulders than I do. So people in the studio might be just letting their hands fall right to the ground above their head. Or you might have less functional shoulders than I, in which case you take a tall block and you relax your hands onto the tall block. I laced my fingers so I can relax my arms, relax my legs. I have to look and see how you all look. At, oh, you look fabulous in studio. So if you can put your arms on your forehead, which is lower than the high block, go for the lowest place your body will. If you can go for the low block, or the ground. I see many people in here, their hands lie right on the ground. Just enjoy your stretch. This is therapeutic stretching with great awareness and great care. We're finding what's just right, even if we have an injury or a limitation. With functional fitness, you reach up as high as you can in your day. Now, to come up out of this, I want to carefully pull in the elbow of my most tender shoulder, then the other elbow, the knee of my most tender side, and then the other knee. Breathing, take the arms down. Take the legs down. Now, interestingly, when you started, if you had put your legs down, your back might have bothered you. But after doing our reclining soul-to-soul -soul knees out, otherwise known as a reclining goddess, you may be able to do this. Take a moment and breathe. Relax your legs. Let them fall. Your toes fall out. Think of your hands. Let's go ahead and put the ha hands down about hip height and then roll over so your palms are up. Roll over so your palms are down. Can you feel how that does something on your shoulders? Or as the kids say, it feels some kind of way. Listen to your body. And if something is tweaking and hurting, go more gently. Intend more carefully, breathing. Now I'm just going to pull up one hand and the other, and I let them find each other and clasp over my chest, breathing. Now let them be palms open and face each other. Listen to your body and let your arms come therapeutically, slowly, carefully, Oh, I got to roll my shoulder blades in. Let your arms come straight up if they will, out if you need. And where will they go? I look around the room and I see many people, their, their arms go right down onto the ground. On my tenderized shoulder, I'll let my thumb come to a, oh, I'm trying to keep it straight to a block my other shoulder, my thumb can go right to the ground. The therapeutic stretch, you go to your body's 
limit, breathe into it gently. Well, if you have the ability to go all the way up like I can on this side, appreciate it, enjoy it. If your body doesn't quite intend as straight as you can, intend as low as it will. And say thank you to your body for whatever it will do. Breathe and be slowly. Bring one arm in at a time. Slowly let your arms come down by your side. It is Javasana, but it's not the end of the road. It's just as your vasana. Release, relax. Now I did put what we use in the studio, which is a ribbon. In, in yoga studios, you use a yoga strap near every mat. Go ahead and find your yoga strap. If you don't use it, just let it rest there in case you might want it. Breathe and be, bend one leg. Breathe and be, bend the other. If you, like me, are working on bending your knees, pull it into your rest bend. If you already have a very bent leg, and appreciate what you've got. Mellow. Now I'm going to bring up one knee at a time. Remember, you might be doing all of this on your bed. You could use your bed covers for this next one. Oh, bring your leg up. Now, here's a tip. If I bring my leg straight up, it's squeezing into my belly, that's squeezing into my diaphragm, that's squeezing into my liver. I don't like that. So I'm going to take my knee a little to the side and pull up. You do what you want for your body. Do you want a ribbon? So that you can hold on to the ribbon with your hands and relax while you pull that knee in for its best bend ever. Breathing. This also gives you best bend ever in the knee. Little flex in the buns. I'm going to set that leg down and try the other side. Best. Where's your knee? Is it straight up? For many people, that's very comfortable. Do you need it out a little? Best. Bend ever. Are you breathing? Huh. Okay, this next part, everybody does differently. I want to go with my yoga strap long and tied in a circle like our ribbons are. How do you put the strap on the arch of your foot? Lots of people just reach and do it. I need my other leg to help get my leg up. And so here we have this leg up with a strap on the arch. Be gentle. Don't pull real hard on your plantar fascia. Breathing. Mellow and well. Now let's talk about where you're holding the strap. If you hold like this, it might feel fabulous. For my arthritis in my hand, not so much. So what I'm going to do is put the ribbon on the fleshy part of my forearm so that I can pull up, but let my, my hands rest. That's it. That's all we got doing is we're just doing a gentle stretch up. Breathing. Now, I did not yet add in the point and flex. Hang with me, especially if you've got sciatic issues. We're going to pull up to your maximum flexibility. No point in flex yet. What this does is it actually stretches the sciatic nerve. So you want to go slowest in the universe point, slowest in the universe flex. Now while you do this so slow, you might get bored. So I'm going to tell you the difference. If your leg is not pulled up to the max, you can do a point and flex for your calf muscle, your shin muscle, your arch. But once you've pulled up to the max, now you're doing a nerve glide. Once you've got the max, be super slow and super gentle. 
this nerve glide at your maximum flexibility with your super awareness of your point and flex can help reduce sciatic issues. When I come out of this, I'm coming out slowly. Oh, how do you want to get the ribbon on the other side? I'm going to put my foot in while it's right here. It just seemed easier, but everything's different. This is the side where right in the center of my tush, I have a tenderness. I don't know if it's where the muscle attaches to the six bones or if it's sciatica or what. So I'm going to be super gentle on my pull up. By the way, the move I just did, I went to the side and then up. That pushed my belly out of the way so I could have my leg in a straight line without squishing my innards. Listen to your body, your shape, your way. I do want to find my maximum, but I was real careful. And now ever so slowly, if you did the maximum, if you're like, I'm bored with this nerve glide stuff, I want to go less intense and do my pump because I like the pump. Oh, but while I'm telling you about oh, the nerve glide, we're holding these for a while. This is the recipe for increasing flexibility. Wow, my hand doesn't like holding it for a while, but my arm will. You relax. That's why we move slow enough not to engage the stretch reflex and hurt anything. You relax. You breathe. And you hold it for time. When you do all of those, your sarco mirrors, they let go and allow the muscle to stretch. Fabulous. Now, however you want to, let's go ahead and set your feet down. Pelvic tilt and relax. And I'm going to tell you something I heard a week ago. I'm doing a whole bunch of pelvic tilts because this rocking is feeling so good. What's feeling good to you? Your body, your way. So here's what I heard a while ago, a week, and it changed my life. They said, your calf muscle, your calf muscles are the second heart of your body. Let's do a stretch while we think about that. The ribbons, I'm going to get my ribbon under one arch and then under the other. I start with my knees bent so I'm comfortable. I pull up. So you could just let your hands hang like a three-toed sloth just hangs right on the ribbon. The knees are bent. Here we are. This is a non-weight-bearing forward fold that allows you to really customize any way you want. Wiggle to get those arches. Do what's right for your hands. If I put it on my palms, it doesn't bother my arthritis. All right. Now, look right at my feet. I just wiggled my uh, ribbon onto my heels. My knees are bent. I can go point and flex and point and flex. Keep doing that while I tell you about your second heart. So everybody knows the heart is a muscle. It squeezes the blood out. And the blood goes out to your farthest extremities and tiny little capillaries. Life is good. Well, what sends the blood back to your heart? And the answer is you don't have any muscles in your veins that help the blood move. You need the muscles in your body to squeeze the veins and send the blood back up to your heart and lungs. Are you breathing as we do this? So we've got lots of stretching going on, but the, the calves are contracting. Gravity is helping not only your blood move, but your interstitial fluid. Take your time, bend your knees, let your feet go soul to soul. Ah, oh, rest your calves. I'm giving a little pull on my ribbon or my yoga strap. 
breathing and mellow. It is a bound angle. Breathing and mellow. Do your hands not want to do the work? Then find one or both arms and just feel your pull up if you choose. Stay medium if you want. Lower down if it's better for you. You are bound angle. Breathing. And then when you're ready, I actually want to support my legs as I lower them down to the ground. Oh, let's have one of our favorite stretches. If I forget this stretch, I will get an email saying, oh, don't forget it next week. I want to rotate our spines. So with your feet on the ground or your knees tucked, it's up to you. I'm going to start with my feet on the ground. My arms come to the side. I'll look toward you. This is my tender shoulder. So I'm really thinking about where it is. Now, if you're looking one way toward your screen, tip your knees. Uh-oh. Pick that up and move your can a little. And then tip your knees off. Now, everybody's different on this. I see many people... In the studio, their leg goes right over and their leg goes right down to the ground. My little short chubby leg kind of hangs around in the air. Wherever your body is, is fine. Shoulder intends toward the ground. Open palm hangs out. Top leg is bent. They start it out together and come on over and choose what you want with your top leg. I pull it. And there we have it. Exhale. On each exhale, press down if you have your hand on your leg. If you don't have your hand on your leg, let your leg be long. It's a more heavy lever arm. And intend your leg to head to the ground. Some people like to do a little teeter-totter. Your body, your way. Everybody looks safe and wonderful in the studio. Let me talk about what we're stretching. Of course, the muscles in the neck, be gentle. The pectoral wall, side of your ribs, latissimus dorsi. Your buns, your outside of your leg. Go through the list and feel it in your mind as each stretches. All righty, so now what I'm going to do is leave your legs where they are. Leave your legs leaned over to the side because that you were looking at me. What you're going to do is tuck your knees in, tuck your hand in. Now you won't be looking at me, but don't worry about it. I'll talk you through it. And there you are laying on your side. Do you want a block under your head? Suzanne, you use the more narrow block. See if that's right for you. So here we are. We're just laying here in the fetal position or the neutral position. We're not looking at each other, but you're going to know what this is. Think of your top leg. Let it go straight down long. And slowly rest to the ground. This top arm pulls forward. Breathing. Keep the leg long. Diane, you want to bend it. Don't do it yet. Long leg goes back. Goes back. There it is. The passive. So am stretch. Now, very individual, this next move. It will stretch your quadricep. So bend that top leg, but let the knee fall down toward the ground. And stretch your quadricep. We're going to hang here a while. We're going to hang here long enough for you to appreciate. The psoas is one of your hip flexors. It connects the top of your thigh bone up through your pelvic girdle to the inside of your spine. Let it stretch. Your quadricep, one of them is a hip flexor. It's stretching out. For some reason, my quadriceps in the last few years both atrophied and tightened up. So I'm not bending as much as most of you. 
accept your body where it is and intend the best bend you can give yourself but don't make yourself have a cramp in your hamstring just a nice bend a nice stretch i'm pulling this top arm forward oh my shoulder my ribs breathe and stay there as long as you want if you're on youtube hit pause and stay a long time whenever you're done you'll just roll right onto your back and there we are we start i gotta have a little windshield wiper before i do the other side oh yeah so we had our arms out. I walked my shoulder blade in. I got my tender shoulder comfortable. Now I'm going to let my knees go the way they did not go yet. Excuse me. I'm going to look away from my knees and pick your butt up and just here's straight. I just move it over a touch so my knees, when they go over my spine, gets such a lovely feeling. This is with my knee, my feet on the ground. Here it is with my knees curled up. Oh, yeah. Now, this top leg, many people's top legs stay right together, and they come all the way over. Mine doesn't. That's okay. What does yours do? Your leg is over where it will for you. Breathe and be. Now, relax. We don't want to engage that stretch reflex. We want to breathe and relax. Can you press this top leg down? Is this arm out behind you as you look behind you and stretch your neck? If you're not reaching the top leg, don't worry about it. Take your leg long and the weight of that longer lever. Oh, oh how's your back feeling? Oh, my loves it. You can tell when Tarzan visits the class, that, or really it's Carol Burnett. Oh, your spine, your outer thigh, this arm being out, oh, the chest wall, the shoulder, the whole shoulder joint, the neck so gentle. Fabulous. Now, this is where we're going to leave your legs on this side. Bend them. I just have to get on my mat a little better. Stay where you are with your nice bent legs. Let your arm come on up. Now you should be looking at me. There we are. Uh-oh. I need a block under my head. I look at you guys more comfortable. This is my tender shoulder, what this block does is it keeps the weight of my head from crushing into my tender shoulder. You need, if you have shoulder issues, get it diagnosed. Is it a frozen shoulder? Is it shoulder arthritis? There's different PT for each of them. Now, where was I? This arm reached forward to stabilize me. This leg went straight down, straight down. On the other side, my foot went right to the ground. On this side, it kind of hangs there. The iliacus is this luscious muscle right up under your hip bone. When your leg is straight down, looks fabulous, every single one. Wait a minute, I have to check. Yes, looks fabulous, every single one. Do you have a ball of your foot, the side of the ball of your foot is on the ground? Let it slide back. Don't bend it. Let it slide back. Oh, the arm pulls forward. This leg goes back. There it is. This is where the psoas is. It connects to this thigh bone. Comes right up through your pelvic girdle into your spine. Beautiful stretches of the psoas. Now, when the leg is long, your body is focused on the iliacus and the psoas. Now, if you, with great care, keep your knee down, bend your leg. Now, I'm working around the leg of my chair. My, my leg wants to come up in the air when I do this. That's all right if it wants to, but I'm going to disagree and intend for it to come down as much as it will. Now, I'm going to tell you what I wish I had, because this is my 
bionic me and it doesn't like bending as much as I want it to. I wish I had something tied to the top of my foot that I could pull my leg to bending more. Mm. Oh, I don't, but I found the table leg back here and I can lean into it and bend. Play with your environment. You might be up against a wall where you could tuck your leg and fold it in. You might find a chair, a table, breathing. I see on my screen, my leg really looks like it's up. All I can say is it feels like it's down and it's as down as it will go. Your body, your way, just for feedback, we don't have a mirror in the studio anymore. Everybody here's leg is all the way down. So nice, so well. <sighs> Very good. Now, when you pull yourself together, take a moment in the fetal position. Breathe, and we're going to lay on our backs for two last asanas. The first one has different moods. I have to laugh. I'm, I'm working in my coaching with people who cope with mood things. And when I was practicing for today, I thought, my happy baby has a mood thing. Sometimes my baby is grounded and leaves the feet on the ground and you just drop your knees wide and enjoy a goddess. So that's the goddess is like a grounded baby. Here's another option. Hug your knees. Just drop your legs open. This is a relaxing baby. But now put your mind on your shins. If your shin points vertical, right up and down toward the ceiling. You might grasp behind your legs. Oh, and feel a stretch. You might grab on your shins. Oh, yes, in the studio, they know the happy baby likes to rock. Some people will actually grasp right onto their feet. One way is not better than the other. So this is the actual yoga happy baby. But I must share with you the ecstatic baby. Remember, you don't have to be holding on to your feet. The ecstatic baby lets your legs go long. Can't you just see it? The baby went long, glee. And let your legs go long. And there's your little rock. So each person, their happy baby. Bent legs. Long legs, rock or not, your body, your way. Your sacroiliac says, thank you. I know I say this every time, but it blows me away that for the first 60 years of my life, I thought the sacroiliac was something Bugs Bunny made up. <laughs> it turns out it's actually a whole set of bones at the back of your pelvis. And we just gave them a happy dance. When I do my little uh, windshield wiper legs, my sacroiliac is also getting a lovely little release. Well, really a little massage. And now I'm heading for our final javasana. What do you want? Do you want to go get a great big fat pillow and put it under your legs? I encourage you to support under your legs as much as you need, but in, oops, pelvic tilt first, and then intend for the smallest pillow or cushion or bolster that you need, that you require. Breathe and be. Oh, this is no fair. We really do have people in the studio. And now I am unable to pop up and uh, do the stretch I'd like to do with you. So I'll talk us all through it, whether you're YouTube, Zoom, or in the studio. See my heels, flex your feet, and let your feet or sneakers be on the mat. And when you release them, it gives a little pull down on your heels. In the studio, I used to pop up pop up and run around and pull everybody's heels. I don't pop that well anymore. And I'm also with you on Zoom and YouTube. So we'll all do a flex, relax, and feel that little pull. 
I need to do movement. Proprioception helps me feel where I have tension and relax it. And now in my mind's eye, I feel my face relax, my neck, my arms, my body, and my legs. Oh, my feet were straight up relax them. Relax. Breathe and be while I give us a little synopsis. When stretching, we've got these circle mirrors in our muscles, and when they release and let go, the muscle gets longer, we get more flexible. The three things that help your circle mirrors let go. Breathing and being is to relax. Don't do sudden movements that engage the stretch reflex. Move kindly and slowly, gently and relax. The next thing is breathe. Breathe. Your circle mirrors as you breathe and relax and intend a gentle stretch and release and find your best stretch place. And the third component is to hold it over time. That's why today in this stretch and flexibility class practice, we held moves long. And this has been a lovely, long javasana. Would you like to stay right here? If you're at home, you can just pull up the covers and go to sleep. I'm going to find my way to, to seated because I have to eventually turn off the recording. I'm moving gently after such luscious relaxing. You move to seated any way you want. By the way, in the studio, if you want to lay down and take a nap, that's okay, too. Your move your way, breathing oh. and being choices. I'm just walking my way onto my mat so that if I wanted to do a V sit, my he heels will be on my mat. If not, that's okay too. Your V sit your way. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see a couple people are best when they do their V-sit up against the wall. Let me show you. For many, many people, actually most, when they sit like this, can you see my rounded back? It starts because my pelvic girdle is tipped back. I want you to look at the pelvic girdle area. If I was able to, I would tip my pelvic girdle and then I would have a tall spine. A lot of people can't do that. So here's what we do if you can't do that. And you guys, I want you both to follow me on this. Lean forward and walk your butt up to the wall, even if it's an imaginary wall, because mm -hmm. you guys' tush was about that far from the wall, and you would have missed the stretch. And it's just too luscious to miss. You've got your V where you want it. You've got your tush right up into the baseboard or the bottom of the sofa. Now walk your body up the wall, imaginary or real. Oh, you guys look fabulous. Feel that. Tall spine. I'm going to tip one shoulder down and then the other. My shoulder blades are sliding against my imaginary wall. Easy, mellow. Very nice. That's the V sit. Let's try the butterfly. Your spine is all up tall. If your spine doesn't go up tall like mine, go get your wall. Breathing. On the butterfly, I do hold on and pull myself up. If you have a new knee as I do, let your knee bend as much as is good for you. Breathing. Being now. Now still with your tall spine. Let's try the easy seat. I'm going to show diagonal. It ain't easy at all for most people. Easy seat is like a kid sitting uh, around the kindergarten play mat where they just cross their legs easy peasy. 
Mm -hmm. I'm very proud this is the best cross that I have. Breathe and be. If anybody is getting a knee replacement, contact me. My contact information is below. I will help you change the no pain, no gain rehab into no pain at all. Enjoy it. Rehab. Breathing. One last pose, and then you'll pick your final. Are you up against the wall? If you're not up against the wall, bend your knees to get that nice tall spine still. Nice tall spine, then let your body go where it will. The staff goes like this. You reach up, you reach up. Intend as up as you will. Flat back, flat back, and then round and round and round. And then crawl down and down and down. Your body, your way. Don't don't imitate anybody. Your staff folds over your way. Relax the neck. Feel between the shoulder blades opens up. Small of the back opens. Hamstrings. If your feet are flexed, your calves are stretching. Now, when you come up, pick one of those. Which one do you like? Because we'll finish off with whichever pose you like best. It was V, butterfly, easy pose with Jane Easy, and staff. Pick one. Feel your tall spine your way. Breathe and appreciate your body. Say thank you. As you put your hands over heart center, notice one hand is on top and the other Thank whoever, whatever you believe in. But this has also come to symbolize one side of you saying thank you to the other side. Maybe it's the mom's side, thank you to the kid, or the kid's side, thank you to the mom. And then as you stretch up, be ready to pat yourself in the back or the chest, what's right for you, and thank yourself for coming to practice. And finally, as if all good things were pulled to you, hand over heart center, should you have very bent wrists or barely bent wrists, make it just right. And know that the light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. As you exhale and release into your namaste, I'm gonna tell you, namaste doesn't mean goodbye. Namaste means hello. So hello to the rest of your day or afternoon or evening. And you know, I always say thank you to you, all of you, whether you're in the studio, on Zoom or on YouTube, thank you to you. See, when I came to know myself, what I learned was I can't make myself work out on my own. Mm -hmm. And you guys are what I use to help me. Here I am role modeling again. What do you need to help you? In this case, get up. What's funny is I don't know if I really can. <laughs> but I can go over to the steps if I can. All right, here we go. I did, I did. That was just like me trying to get on the SEPTA bus. Everybody in the bus was, can she? Can she? Can she? She did! And they clapped. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. So... Let me turn off the recording for those on YouTube. But if you're here on Zoom or in the studio, we'll say hi after class. So contact me if you want an invite. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do this with no glasses. Stop the recording. Yes. Mike.